My name is Felizmina Moreira, I'm a PhD researcher and uh, since uh, two, January of 2020, I'm coordinating uh, the Biomark Sensor Research Team in Instituto Politécnico of Porto School of Engineering. So, the uh, Biomark Sensor Research, as I told before, is located in the Institute uh, in School of Engineering uh, of, Insti uh, of uh, Polytechnic of Porto. We are one research group uh, with around 15 uh, researchers, some uh, PhD fellow, fellowshippers, uh, some, uh, we have around seven PhD students and master students and graduated and uh, Erasmus students. So uh, here I have one photo uh, of the, this photo is quite recent from maybe two months ago and it, it is the, uh, our team. So what uh, we do in uh, Biomark Sensor Research, we develop a biosensing device uh, in different fields, uh, food, environment and um, health. Uh, we work basically with electrochemistry. We, we develop biosensing device uh, uh, with, different, uh, with different configura uh, configurations and shapes. Also, we work uh, with optical sensors, mostly based in colorimetric, uh, colorimetric sensors using, by using uh, uh, cellulose as a, a substrate. But our main goal uh, is to detect biomarkers circulating in uh, biological fluids. So, what consists one biosensing device? For to develop one biosensing device, we need one support material. We work in biomark with different supports, has glass, um, uh, uh, glass, cellulose paper, PET, uh, ceramics, etc. On top of these uh, support materials, it, uh, we uh, immobilize uh, the biorecognition layers. These biorecognition layers could be uh, from natura, uh, natural, has antibodies or enzymes, or could be uh, synthetic. Uh, as a synthetic, we work with aptars as a biorecognition layer, but our focus, the main focus of our research, is molecular imprinting polymer. And what is the advantage of molecular imprinting polymer? Uh, the natural recognition layers are very sensitive and selective. However, they late in price, in stability to high uh, temperature or high pH, and molecular imprinting polymer has, has a artificial nature. Uh, is very robust in terms of temperature, in terms of pH. Sometimes we can reuse and as it's artificial, it's possible to be scalable, easily scalable, scalable. So, when the analyte uh, interacts with the biorecognition element, yeah, natural or synthetic nature, uh, this, this event could be transduced in one signal that could be optical, electrochemical in mass. But our focus in biomark is electrochemistry. Electrochemical, we work mainly with electrochemical biosensors. So, but how the main goal of this presentation is to speak a little bit about plastic antibodies or biomimetic uh, uh, materials. Uh, how we develop uh, plastic antibodies. Plastic antibodies are developed by the molecular imprinting technology. Uh, I will explain the principle of the, this methodology. So we have one analyte, could be one protein, one bacteria, one antibiotic, etc. And uh, the monomer will, the, the analyte will interact with monomers in order to form one complex. Then we could add some uh, cross-linkers in order to reticulate the, the polymer and the polymerization starts with addition in the specific case of um, chemical because it is possible to develop um, molecular imprinting polymers with different uh, technologies approach but uh, if it is chemical 
polymerization, we could add one initiator, we should add one initiator, we work with benzoyl peroxide, benzoyl ammonium peroxide, depend of the solvents, and the, of course the target analyte. Sometimes we need temperature for to start the reaction, or we can, uh, we work also with uh, electrochemistry, so we, we develop uh, polymers, molecular printing polymers with the electrochemistry. The energy is a, a, a potential. And the last step consists in the template remo the removal from the polymeric matrix in order we obtain cavities with the shape of the target analyte. And then we, we have to, we can perform the, the rebinding, or is the, the binding of the target analyte to the cavities with the shape of the analyte. So, uh, the molecular imprinting polymers have been widely used in chromatography and chemosensors. Uh, for chemosensors, the traditional or the gold standard methodology is bulk polymerization. Here I have one example of one molecular imprinting polymer for one uh, antibiotic, uh, oxytetracycline. It was one, one work that was developed in Biomark a long time ago. So what we did, we mixed it. It's a very simple approach, very simple. The target, the target here is the antibiotic, the oxytetracycline with monomers, cross-linkers, initiator, and the solvent. Usually we use porogenic solvent, and with temperature we obtain one powder, we breathe and see, and then we remove the template. And in this specific case, we used two different monomers, acrylamide, acrylamide and bisacrylamide, and uh, we stu study different ratios, and we could study different uh, uh, solvents and copolymers. In this case, we use a copolymer, and we prepare three different uh, materials, copolymer, and we do different monomers. Uh, after we obtain the sensor, the, the powder, the molecular imprinted polymer, we incorporate in one PVC membrane with one uh, mediator solvent and we cast it, as you see here, in this syringe. Yeah? It's composed by one syringe, one copper wire, carbon on top. We casted the, the membrane and we applied potentiometry and we study the analytical performance of the biosensor by the potential treat is one electrochemical technique. So when here in this is the example, yeah, we optimize the, the ratio and the kind of uh, monomers, the amount of the sensor in the polymeric matrix, in the in PVC membrane, and the kind of solvents, and then we forward, move on for the application to the samples with oxy tetracycline. So, to imprint uh, compounds as antibiotics, pesticides, is quite easy, but when we move on for proteins, it's more difficult, because proteins are very sensitive, and this is very easy to lose the 3D configuration and we need to be more careful in to imprint. Uh, for example, it's not possible to use high temperature for the polymerization because the protein will be will lose its conformation. So if we use usually one technique is surface imprinting. And I will explain two techniques that you we used um, for in our work. Yeah. Uh, for example here I have an example, we work with disposable, not all the time, sometimes we uh, fabricate our own uh, electrodes, but um, needs optimization, so before we develop one sensor more quickly, we buy the electrodes uh, that are available commercially. So we work with screen printed electrodes, are disposable, and what uh, happens, uh, for, we modify chemically the, 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 the working electrode of the, the screen printed electrode uh, in order to bind the protein on top uh, of the electrode because we are by self assembled monolayer is one technique but we, we work with different techniques. This is a standard, I'm presenting the standard. 
This, in this case, this gold, but could be carbon, could be platinum. We work with different materials. Should be conductive because we are working with electrochemistry. In this case, it's gold. We modify the surface with one tile. We have one functional group. Then we attach the protein. It could be covalent or only by uh, hydrogen bonds or, or electrostatic, depending of what we desire or what design we are uh, trying to develop and optimize. Then we add the monomers. Yeah, we need to choose carefully the monomers that will interact with the, the protein and the polymerization will carry out uh, with addition uh, of one initiator. And then the last step consists in the template from the polymeric markets. So this is the, uh, I think, yeah, it's here. Uh, this is in the case of chemical when we use chemical initiative. But uh, we work uh, in Biomar uh, also because with other techniques. We have a lot of publications with uh, like line printing polymer, but we use the technique the electropolymerization. The, pol the polymerization starts by uh, applying one potential that will uh, uh, allows, allows the monomer to form radicals or start polymerization. Uh, here I have one example. We have and it's gold, but could be another another conductive material. And as an example, is is this example is three steps. Could be three steps, but difficult. It's uh, sometimes we need more steps. Yeah, for improve the sensitivity and selectivity, we need to play with nanomaterials, but I will uh, show later on in, because I will present some present work that we have been developing in Weimar. So here we mix the template is one protein, for example, with one monomer. We apply to one potential. We could use chronoamperometry or cyclic voltammetry. The polymerization starts. And then we have one, we, I could say one bulk because protein, but it's not bulk. Traditional bulk is the first example that uh, I showed. And uh, we need to optimize all, uh, the, the electrochemical parameters and chemical the monomer and, and the protein ratio, etc., pH. Uh, and then uh, we perform the template removal, the protein removal. Uh, from the polymeric matrix. Here we use several strategies. Sometimes we, we try first always uh, enzymes because it doesn't affect the surface of the, um, of the polymer because it's critical. Uh, sometimes it sorts and we use other strategies. We use acids, base, and sometimes we use more than one, more than one strategy. We use uh, also try sometimes some solvents we, we it's one optimization work so now i will give some uh, examples of recent research work that uh, we have been done in, in biomark um, uh, uh, now i will give some i will i will like to give some examples of uh, uh, biosensing device applied uh, to alzheimer's disease i like we, we have finished now one project, one ongoing project during the last three years, to KV on Euro, and we develop a biosensing device for, for to detect the biomarkers associated with Alzheimer's disease. I started work with this project in my postdoc in 2014, so I have been working a long time ago, but why I will present the research work under this project. Uh, here are the, I have the, the biomarkers. We work with tau proteins, amyloid, and uh, so, uh, some microRNAs that are considered uh, now currently as a promising biomarkers and circulating in the, in the blood and, and cell. So I will present uh, not only like line printing polymer, but other biosensors with other biorecognition elements, because as I told before, our main focus is biomimetic materials, but we work also with other biorecognition layer. So this is uh, one, uh, this work is related with one plastic antibody uh, for to detect tau protein. 
that is one biomarker associated with uh, Alzheimer's disease and uh, potentially is considered considered as a promising biomarker. Biomark. So we use carbon screen printed electrodes, then do what happens, we pre-treated the electrodes, it's necessary to activate the electrodes. Then this is a very quick, this, this work was quite simple. The, we let the student electropolymerize the, 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 the one, one uh, monomer, yeah, aminophenol, with the, the tau protein, and then remove the template removal from uh, the template from with uh, protein SK um, from the polymeric matrix. So this work was characterized, all these steps are characterized by electrochemical techniques and in this work by Haman spectroscopy also. And the analytical performance of the biosensor was evaluated by electrochemical techniques. Uh, in this case was uh, spectroscopy, impedance spectroscopy. So another example. This is a recent work, it's a collaboration, it's a work under collaboration with Swansea University. Uh, and we try to develop uh, one biosensor for, based on white line printing polymer for to detect interleucine 6, that is one a biomarker associated with inflammation or neuroinflammation. It's not a specific biomarker. Uh, and we develop one plastic antibody on top of uh, microneedles. What we're trying to prove, or we, we, develop, a uh, we develop a proof of concept yeah, uh, for the development of one plastic antibody uh, for to detect interleucine, could be applied for other, other biomarkers in skin interstitial fluid. The idea is to develop minimally invasive biosensing device. And now uh, I'm moving forward with uh, this university and uh, I'm working with them and collaborating one project between um, Swansea, Imperial and Japan. And is our first, first uh, publication, but we have some ongoing uh, materials. So we modified, this was, was Mike needles fabricated in Swansea University. We modified, the, is modified with platinum. Uh, we develop uh, the plastic antibody on top uh, of the micro needles, and uh, we tested uh, with um, interstitial fluid. Yeah, we, we evaluate the performance of the biosensor in interstitial fluid, and uh, we get uh, good results, results or promising results in terms of limit of detection. We Will detect down then uh, the limit detection is done then one picogram per ml. So the characterization we perform other characterizations as I told we use <coughs> uh, uh, micro, uh, uh, same scan, scanning electron microscope uh, and electrochemical techniques for follow up the modification of the, the micro needles. Uh, here we used uh, is another work. It's not so recent, so it's optical, but based on the plastic antibody. Here we use cellular cellulose paper, test strips. We develop some sensors similar to the UI dipsticks, is the, is the goal. We are working in, also in parallel with this technology. Here we modify chemically the, the test strips. We, we treated the first with um, one silane, amino, with amino aptus, with one amino introduced. We work, we modify layer by layer. In this case, amine group, aldehyde group, glutaraldehyde for the covalently attached of the protein by amine group, temp polymerization with monomers and cross link as an initiator and the template removal. Uh, and here, uh, this work was promising. We could detect uh, amyloid was for amyloid from one nanogram to 10 micrograms per ml and uh, this work is is uh, published and is under we are under patent now I try to patent and uh, the color development yeah because it's important we work uh, dyes staining dyes similar to blood for pharmacy 
Uh, here, I will give an example under this project is when here we used this one work in collaboration with the University of Vigo. Uh, we developed one biosensor, electrochemical biosensor. But here uh, we used one antibody, one natural antibody, because uh, till now I didn't achieve the suitable, we, we didn't achieve the suitable limit of detection uh, of these biomarkers in the, the biological foods, because the levels are very low. And to the main difficulty, one of the main difficulties, and we faced a lot of difficulties, is to achieve the very low limit of detection. And these biomarkers do, do circulate in a very low concentration. So uh, by, we could achieve with like line predict polymer, but sometimes we are trying to mimic the nature and it's difficult yeah, because nature is perfect. And we are trying to, to mean, mind ties, mind ties. So we use, um, and here we play, play with nanomaterials. We use carbon, screen printed electrodes. The group of the University of Vigo sensitized one composite material, it was carbon nanotubes aminated and with platinum nanoparticles. We study different configurations of these particles and uh, we used, we follow with the the nanomaterial that showed the best uh, performance. Then we attach the antibody, block the unspecific sites, and then we, we perform the, the, um, the binding assays by spiking the letter with different concentrations of the, how in this case was the protein 1, 8, 1. Uh, here we used another technique, not in class, we work with steroid voltammetry, and we achieve uh, the limit of detection under the physiologic range or near from the physiologic range. And uh, I, I was happy because, as I told you, this is our main difficulty, the levels are very low. Uh, and we have, this is the one, this, this work is not published, we are it. Is here we work with nucleic acid. We, the idea was to detect one micro RNA, RNA, RNA yeah. uh, that is one is, is 34A, is considering actually um, a promising biomarker. It's simple to work with, more simple to work with micro RNAs. Why? Because the, the proteins related with Alzheimer, they aggregate, they are very complicated. It's not easy to, to work with the, the, these proteins. This is the main difficulty. In microRNAs, it's easier. And uh, this is one, one work developed under one master's, master's student, the thesis, with the collaboration with one group in Porto, I3S. Uh, here, the student, um, she modified the the elytrode, the carbon elytrode, with first with different morphologies of gold nanoparticles. The, non -nano, the gold nanoparticles has a, nano, has a high surface, so we try, we, what we would try to do is to improve the limit of detection and we compare the analytical features without nanoparticles, with different nanoparticles, and choose the best way for go further. And she modified, she deposited different uh, um, kind, morphologies of, of gold. She immobilized, immobilized the, the one sequence of oligonucleotides, modified one tile group for to covalent attach to the nanoparticles. And then uh, she blocked and she hybridized with the, the microRNA to proceed. So she used uh, the analytical performance of the, the biosensor uh, was evaluated with electrochemical techniques. Here we have the two morph morphologies of the nanoparticles. The best, uh, the best, two, the best results uh, were performed with the, I think it's a flower or cylindric, I don't know, because we cannot, but the, the spheric are not very spheric nanoparticles and then she moved forward for the study of cell activity, the, she studied with the, uh, 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 with the 
I uh, sell activity and with serum samples. I didn't present because it's a lot of work. I'm just presenting the idea. Uh, we also are working. So I, now I will move for uh, cancer. We have some PhD, Ventolin Porto. We only have PhDs that are working with cancer. Uh, so uh, I will present uh, two, two different works, one electro, two, two optical works. Yeah. Um, this work was performed uh, is is the base of the PhD of one student, Mariana. So she is modifying the uh, cellulose paper, uh, and then she attached modify chemically, and then she attached the natural antibody. She she block, and this is when Elisa based uh, based immunosensor. Why? Because for the color development, so she has the sensor with the antibody, the biorecognition layer, then she performed the binding. The binding of the, in this case was CA, CA153, is one cancer biomarker. And then the, for the color development, she used a secondary antibody with one enzyme, uh, peroxidase, and she had uh, a substrate of the one. It's TNB, I don't remember now the old name, and hydrogen peroxide. What, what she obtained, this is published. I forgot to put the publication, it's a recent published work. And what she got, one gradient of the color development with the increase of the concentration of the target. It's a very promising, was a very promising work. She got uh, re results, linear results in buffer, in calibration. Uh, limit, not limit of detection, this lower limit of linear range 2, unit is perennial and the physiological value is 30. So she, she, the sensor could detect under the physiological level and, some, and it's, it's promising. Still needs um, optimization of course in terms of set activity, which is a promising work. Here is one work, uh, is present work, was another master student, is Mariana. And um, she worked also with, uh, the same, with the same biomarker, but here she worked with quantum dots, fluorescence, it's colorimetric, but it's fluorescence. She sensitized quantum dots, quantum dots, she produced quantum dots, modify chemically, add the, um, mobilize the antibody, and she made the analytical performance that, uh, by fluorescence. Um, so she achieved very good uh, limit of detection, but, but here she worked in solution, was not in uh, uh, one substrate on support, is liquid, because it's under one master, one master, so she optimized the device, but in liquid solution. Uh, we worked also with cancer, uh, cancer cardiovascular cardiac disease, yeah, my PhD. In my PhD, I developed biosensors for cardiac biomarkers. But here I will have one example. I present always this work because it's under my PhD and is more cited work that I have. Here I developed a long time ago, in 2012 or 13, one plastic antibody for to detect myoglobin, uh, is one cardiac biomarker. Marker. Um, and I used um, gold screen printed electrode, I modify with one tile, then um, I attach the protein and the novelty, I could say the novelty, I pre-incubate the, um, the protein with charger monomers and uh, the polymerization was carried out with mono, monomers without charge, in this case it was acrylamide and bisacrylamide and the template removal was performed by protein SK. And we can see in IFM for the first time these points that we believe that is the, the cavities. We are not sure, yeah, but we believe. And the analytical performance was obtained um, by electrochemical techniques as in dance and square wave voltammetry and was the best uh, results that I obtained during my PhD with my own in terms of limit of detection. Because it was one part. Yeah, it was my last work with my own. 
Here I have another interesting work for uh, my Lubin. It's from Margarida Pilot. She's a PhD. She's a postdoc. Researcher. She work, worked with myoglobin, but she actually worked with cancer. cancer and she can get one uh, project from FCT. They should all, they all work with membranes and quantum dots and um, for cancer. Um, so here she developed, she model, she's an expert in fluorescence. Marie is the expert in the group. Uh, she modified, she sensitized to produce the quantum dots, modified chemically uh, with the plastic antibody, with the same strategy, and she immobilizing some membranes, cellulose membranes, not cellulose paper, she produced one cellulose membranes, and as we can see when the protein is binding, uh, the color, uh, the color, no, the fluorescence decreases. Uh, and she, she, this is already published. So some uh, researchers are working with uh, oxidative stress. Uh, this is one three nitro nitro tyrosine. It's not. Uh, I think it's a. I, I, it's not my work. I think it's a metabol. It's not uh, one. It's not one protein. Uh, and was performed with Gabriela Martins. Is a PhD researcher in Porto, in Biomark. Here it is a very interesting work because she, she fabricated her own uh, electrodes. She used cellulose paper. Uh, it's one work in collaboration with her, uh, one of her supervisors in her PhD, uh, in the group of Senimat. Um, and she developed one uh, light line printing polymer on top of the the, the light was fabricate, fabricated by, by Gabriella, but in collaboration with other group. And the nice thing is that usually for electrochemistry we need redox probes. We use an indirect measurement. We use ferrocyanide and ferrocyanide, iron two, one complex of iron two and iron three for follow up. Uh, what is happening on the on top of the electrode? But here has this compound, this electroactive. She didn't. Uh, use uh, this redox probe and is 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 very promising because it's uh, one step of solution that she don't need for redox yet. She can read directly sample and is one of directions that we are look are, are going in in my mind. Uh, we had one another project. Is it finished? Class technical. Uh, I like to I like the tomatoes. This project, but I like this area. We develop um, test cell loss based colorimetric cell loss based test strips for to detect antibodies against COVID. Uh, here I have one example of one, uh, one work is optical, it's colorimetric, and we modify the cell loss paper in this case with the um, sodium peridate in order to obtain uh, aldehydes for the protein. The mean group of protein attached and deform one mean group and then blocked the unspecific sites. Uh, the protein, protein against COVID was immobilized and then the color development was, was performed uh, by using one stain. Stain reagent here is the, I, the not comma C, I forget the name, sorry. I think that is red. Is, Sorry, I remember the name. Uh, but we got uh, very promising results. We can see one gradient of color with increase of concentration of, of the, anti the antibodies. And this is one recent work, it's one year, maybe one year ago. Uh, also, uh, we have one ongoing project. The leader in Biomark is Gabriela Matins. Uh, the last the work that I present was during her PhD. Now she has one project that's very, in my opinion, very interesting. She is developing uh, on top of membranes uh, biosensors that will be colorimetric, will mix electrochemistry with colorimetry, for to detect on, on, on real time, to monitor on real time. Uh, biomarkers associated with uh, inflammation and is applied to chronic uh, wounds, wounds. Chronic uh, inflammation. 
Nee, foot, nou, wat voor voet? Want die diabetic ons. Uh, we have also, we are working on that with smart materials, that's why I, I put that uh, my interests are smart materials. We have one going project, it's a consortium project, and in Biomark we are developing um, uh, smart materials or smart sensors, yeah, for, for to control the, the, the traceability of the, in this case, scans. That will with milk will be the the, the um, entrepreneur, entrepreneur yes would like to to sell cans of Coca Cola, similar to Coca Cola, but with milk. And we are developing sensors, polymetric sensors, sensors for to monitoring the temperature, the temperature um, in cans. But we are developing. Uh, irreversible ones and reversible ones at different temperatures and it's one ongoing project that will finish soon but we already have the proof the proof no we are in the phase of validation of the sensor in the L context so for finishing yeah i present here different uh, biosensing device with different biorecognition layers and uh, would be we work with i didn't present one biosens biosensors with aptamers but we have been developing in biomark biosensors using aptamers as a recognition layer so the but antibodies aptamers in enzymes as i told before are very sensitive in selectivity but they have the disadvantage yeah, in, the, in terms of usability stability price i forgot to talk price and for me it, well, the promising one promising strategy is biomimetic materials based on like line printed polymer. And uh, I would like to acknowledge your attention. Uh, so, yeah, I finished my presentation.